Hi, I'm Tim from Weber and today we're going to show you how to assemble the Weber Spirit 310 gas grill. In this grill you're only going to need four tools. You're going to need a couple screwdrivers, a Phillips and a regular, a wrench, and a 7 16 socket. We're just going to start out by opening the box. And on top of the box are going to be two packets. The assembly instructions and then your owner's manual. So all we're going to need now is the assembly instruction. I'll put the owner's manual over here. Okay, the best thing to do is take all the pieces out and lay them out. It makes it much simpler. So that's what we're going to do right now. I've got Chris from Hay Needle helping me today, and it's always nice to have a second person assisting you, because some of these parts can be a little bit heavy and they're a little bit bigger, so you want to make sure you have a good, good handle on everything as you, as you move it around and assemble. Inside the lid is some extra parts. You're going to make sure you take these out and then package these. What I like to do is I just put everything back in the box, all the trash, then flip the box over and use it as an assembly table. It makes things a lot easier. And there's two cotter pins in the back of these hood, on the hood lid. I'm gonna unhook that and take this lid off. It's easier to, to maneuver around. And this box that's inside the, inside the lid and the, inside the cook box contains the casters, your hardware kit, your drip pan, your tank scale, so this is the box with all the important stuff in it. These are the control knobs. This, this right here is the is all the all the hardware that's required. And the it, neat thing about it, they've marked them A, B, C, so when you go through the instructions, it's very clear on what piece to use next. So this is this is real nice. What I always usually do is take the drip pan, this is our grease collection pan, and throw everything in here so everything stays well organized. First step is we're going to put the casters onto the base. Now there's, there's four casters. Two of them are just basic casters and two are locking casters. You can see how they'll, they'll lock in place. You want to make sure you put the locking casters on the front. And there's a little symbol here with a lock on the front. So you just, right here. So you, those, those two locking casters will go in the front and the other two will go in the back. And we use screws in package A for these for these casters. Now we're going to flip over this because there's four casters on it and now we're going to put the two side uh, panels on here. This is step number two. You tell them apart this one has the magnetic uh, clip for the the door so this one will go on the front side. Now you want to put your locking casters towards the front so that you know what's, that's how the instructions are telling you to do this. The magnet for the the door goes on the right side of the grill, and Chris will put the other side up on there. You use the screws in the hardware pack B. So each screw, you insert a washer into the screw, and then into the holes. And there's six screws on each side. Okay, we just completed step two and three, so we put on the side panels. Next, we're gonna put on the back panel. And again, using the same screws that are in package B. So we'll just set that on here. And again, you want to put this hole down. This is an event you did have a natural gas grill. This is what this hole is for. So you slide this through here, and then the four screws will go in the sides here. All right, that's done. You can see how the cart's now coming together. Next thing we'll do, we'll put the two crossbars on here to connect them and make them stronger. That's step number five in your instructions. And again, we're still using parts from Harbor Pack B. There are two different cross sections here. They're somewhat similar. This, this one with the little dip in it is for the front. That's where the, the, the hose for the gas line will go through. So this, this is the easy one to remember, okay? Uh, you wanna make, double check on there, make sure you, you line it up right, make sure it's inside or outside, make sure it's correct. So we're gonna check here, and it, the lip is gonna go to the inside on this one. Now in mounting this front one, you're only gonna mount two of the screws because when you mount the front control panel, it actually mounts into here too. So it notes that in the construction, so make sure you're, you're aware of that. It's just two, one screw on each side to start out, and then later on we'll put the second screws in there. Okay, the next piece that's going to go in is the tray. This holds the catch pan. So actually this is the catch pan that catches all the grease. This goes in here, and it goes in the side over here. So there's two screws for it, but you can see there's a little piece that goes through the little square notch. In, in the side here, it just slips through there and sets in. 
and then you just put in the two different screws. Attached to this is a chain, a little a long wire, and a lot of people ask, what's this for? And this is an event that your, your battery's out on your igniter, all the igniters in the spirits have a battery. So the battery had gone out, and you need to have some assistance in lighting the grill, you can put a match on the end of this and stick this into the grill when you're lighting it. That's what this is for. Most people just use this, and hang it right here on here. It just stays out of the way. All right, the next step is to actually lift the, the cook box up onto the grill. But you want to make sure you drop the gas line and the igniter in behind the bar here. It's going to sit down inside the grill. All the burners and valves are pre-assembled into the cook box. This is our cast aluminum cook box. It'll never rust on you. Uh, the, everything's pre-tested at the factory, so it's been lit, so you can feel comfortable. You'll never have an issue with this grill. Okay. Next, first thing we're going to do is we're going to mount the, this is called the bulkhead, but it's basically the gas hose. We're going to mount this on the side right here. Still using parts from packet B. So take two little screws, mount this on the side here. And then now we'll go to the other side and we're going to mount the igniter. We're going to use parts from packet D for the igniter. And in that packet are a couple of things besides the screws. We have two small screws. These screws go into the side and hold the, the actual igniter into the wall. And then this is the battery that's included in that kit. The battery actually goes right into here. We'll put that in once we have it mounted on the wall. And there's two other little gray clips. And these go into the side, of, inside the grill. And this is where this white cable clips into so it stays out of the way when you open the door. Now we're going to take the, the white electric wire and tuck it in the little gray clips that we put in there so it stays out of the way. There's two clips in here so you can see how it goes there. And then we're going to insert the battery. The positive side of the battery needs to be sticking out. Okay, so you, when you put it in, make sure the positive side is out. The next step is to put on the control panel. On the back of the control panel, this is your igniter button, and there's an, another wire. So you, make sure when you put this in, you're going to tuck this wire down behind the, there. It'll, it'll follow the same path and clip into the same clips because it's part of the igniter system. And then on here, there's two little clips where this lip, the, the back lip of this control panel will go over. Now there's going to be actually five screws that are going to hold this control, control panel in. On the front, on the bottom one in here, we use the, the two remaining screws from packet B. And then up here, we're going to use the, the screws from packet J. Next, we're going to put on the, the two side shelves. There's two different shelves. They're identical, so you can go on either side. You're going to need the hardware from packet K. In there, there's a rectangular washer and then a screw. So this, this washer is a little bit different. So you can see it's a little bit longer. So put the shelf in, rectangular washer, and then the nuts. Once these shelves are on, they're good and tight. You actually can lift the grill with, uh, from using the shelves. Now, if you're assembling a Spirit E330, the difference would be this side uh, panel over here would actually be a side burner. So you, it's a little bit different and then you'd have a gas hookup underneath here. Other than that, it's basically the same grill. Other than it, the 330 has an extra sear burner as well, but that's already built in part of the cook box. So you won't have to, there's no assembly to that. So the only difference in assembling, again, is the side burner that you're gonna put on there. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is, is hook up these igniter wires to the actual igniter. So you're just gonna take these and plug them in push them in until they click. Then you take this wire and you also tuck these back in the little clips so they stay out of the way. And then you double check it by pressing the igniter and you'll hear it click. All right. Okay, next we're gonna put in the tank scale. And this is, if, if you're not familiar with this feature, it's really a cool and it's unique to Weber. You actually hang your LP tank on here and it all, it gives you an indication of how much gas you have left in your tank. So that's going to mount right here on the side. So we're going to put, put two screws in. And then also we have two little bumpers. These are tank bumpers. And they're going to go in on the side over here. And they're just little plastic pieces that stick out. And they'll sit right down in here. And that'll let the tank actually rest against it. The next is, a, is our drip tray. 
it just slides in right into the slot right in here. And this is where all the drippings come down. This is part of our grease management system. And if there's one word of advice, every month or two, take this out and clean this out over your trash can because all your flare ups are going to happen in your grill are going to happen right here. This is just things that have accumulated on here. But this just goes, slides right into here and stays right there. And then below that is the catch pan. So all the drippings actually funnel down into these catch pans and they just nest right into here. And then every, you can take these out and there's a removable tray and you can take that and take that to your trash can and replace that. You can find that uh, anywhere that sells Weber. You can get those replacement trays. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the, the front door on it. A couple pieces to hold the screws. Put the screws through the holes and attach the handle. And then there's a little insert that goes in here. Okay, that hole goes right over this little piece that we just put in the, in the bottom frame. And there's a little push button up here that goes into the top frame. Put that in, it'll lock right in. The door shuts. Next thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna put the control knobs on and put the flavorizer bars down inside the grill, put the grates in and put the lid on, and we're good to go. What these flavorizer bars do, they do a couple things. Number one is they're positioned over the burner tubes inside the grill, so they protect those burner tubes from all drippings. But the most important thing is they do is that when they're heated up, you have even heat all the way to the front to back because this whole bar gets hot. Okay, and finally it gets the name flavorizer bars because it's hot, drippings come down, they vaporize some, some of the drippings, and then you get extra flavor in the grill. So we have five of these that go across here, and we'll have the three control knobs. And just put it so the Weber grill is facing straight up, and that's the off position. And these are the two grates. These are cast iron grates with a porcelain enamel finish. They're ready to use right out of the box. They've got a finish on there, they're good to go. And you can use a steel brush on these to clean them, anything you want. The lid drops on. There's a pin for each hinge in the back. So you insert the pin, and there's a cotter pin for each one. A couple final things. We've got the warming rack that goes in. It just slots right into here. Inside, the drip tray goes in this catch pan here. And goes right back in here. And there you go. Last thing you need to do is peel off this sticker <laughs> so it doesn't melt on there. Well, there you have it. We just put together the Weber Spirit E310 gas grill. I hope you found it as easy as we did. Um, one thing to do is like we did, you just step by step in the instructions, start at one and follow all the way through and, and you shouldn't have any problems. It took us about 40 minutes and that includes taking everything out of the box, laying it out and going step by step. If you have any issues while you're doing it, feel free to call Weber at 1-800-446-1071 to their customer service and they'll answer any questions that you should have. Enjoy your grill.